I never had no one that I could count on. I've been let down so many times. I was tired of hurting, so tired of searching. Till you walked into my life, it was a feeling I'd never known. And for the first time, I didn't feel alone. You're mine. this ceremony and uh, this is time with Josh and Renee. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to believe that it's actually here because I've, we've been, it's been months and months since uh, we announced it and started putting it in the bulletin and now it's here. Dearly beloved, we are meeting today in the sight of God and before this company to join together this man and this woman in marriage. The marriage relationship was instituted by the Lord in the beginning, when he brought Eve to Adam in the garden. The marriage was commended of the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It's not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly. Marriage should rather be entered reverently, discreetly, and advisedly, and most of all in the fear of God. Into this holy union, these two come now to be joined. 
At this time, uh, there, is, there are going to be some vows to the younger children of the family. Uh, Josh and Renee are blending families into a, a new unit. And so we'll ask the kids to be positioned right now. So RJ, if you come up and stand by your parents. I forgot your necklace in the bathroom. <laughs> but I just we just want to make sure that you guys are we love you with all your heart with our hearts. And I'll love you even knowing your stepmom. I will treat you like my own. I love you, kids. Okay. I love you, kids. Okay. I love you, kids. 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 Now, from here on, I will have a few things to say to you. Uh, I'd rather to say to them, so I'm going to turn my back on you, but that does not mean that you're not important. But I would ask you to remind yourselves or to take a few notes mentally of what we shared uh, with Josh and Renee, and then uh, uh, just kind of enter into the spirit of what we're sharing today. Josh and Renee, the most monumental day of your lives as a writer. After today, you will be known as Mr. and Mrs. Fisher, husband and wife. In this one day, you will be uniting two lives, two backgrounds, two families, and two very different ways of thinking. From the multiplicity of combinations available to you, you together must create one unit that glorifies the God before whom you both stand. In today's world, there is much against which you must battle, and I know you know this. There is much to cause defeat and discouragement. Many face what you are facing, and they tremble with fear at the sight of the enemy-riddled mountains and valleys of the life over which they must traverse. Many succumb and are conquered by the adversaries, so that they never complete their journey in this life. You, however, can be different. From this point forward, you can guarantee a complete and successful life together if you cultivate an abiding love. This is very important in the scriptures. Allow me to read a brief excerpt from the book of Ruth, which portrays this quality of abiding love. This comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And it was actually said by Ruth to her mother-in-law, because uh, Naomi, her mother-in-law, uh, Naomi's husband died, and so did Ruth's husband, and so did uh, Naomi's other son. So they, they were all gone, all the men of the family. And this is what she said. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave, me, leave thee, or to return from following after you. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but the death parts you and me. Many years ago, I was a physical therapy technician in the United States Army. I served at Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma. I had two patients at that time. Uh, when I served in the rehabilitation, the neural network uh, uh, section of our physical therapy clinic, I had a patient named Robert who was afflicted by a disease called Guillain-Barre. And it demyelinated the sheaths of his nerves and he could not move and he could not stand and he could not do anything for himself. His wife deserted him at that time of need. The other man, the other patient was a man that we called Grizzly. His name was Jim Adams, but he was a big, burly, strong man. I do believe he could have lifted me with one hand and tossed me across the room. 
except he was in an accident and a brainstem entry left him in a similar condition as Robert Sainz. I will never forget his wife, so petite, so genteel, standing up next to him when we put him up, finally put him up in a tilt table so that he could stand for the first time in months. And he was confessing that he was afraid. And he is, because of his brain stem injury, he was saying over and over, I can't do it, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And this little gal got right up underneath him. She couldn't have held him if she wanted to, but she sat right up near him and said, lean on me. I'm going to be right here. And we're going to make this work. And you're going to walk again. And then she spoke with, to him with extreme vigor and uh, arduous uh, language. And she says, you're going to walk or I'm going to kick you. Uh, she had a few more descriptive words <laughs> to, uh, to add. But which of these two women manifested abiding love? Now, I think Renee has shown you a lot of abiding love. Josh, with all that she's gone through. And you guys have the potential to make a really good family unit. Abiding love manifests a comparable expression toward a loved one. Allow me to describe four expressions of this abiding love from the example of Ruth as she followed her widowed, widowed and bereaved mother-in-law into a foreign country. First of all, abiding love does not desert a loved one. She said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. Ruth promised to travel any terrain. She promised to rest in Naomi's presence. Ruth was exploring God's or love's dimensions, which are wide enough to cross oceans, deep enough to fill valleys, high enough to reach God's throne, and long enough to outlast time. Secondly, abiding love accepts the people of the loved one. Ruth said to Naomi, your people shall be my people. Ruth married more than just a man. She also married his mother and his people. To do as Ruth did means you will have to discard some expectations, accept your new families, respect each other's customs and backgrounds, and love them, one another's families. Because you don't just marry a person, you marry all the background and all that comes with him or her. Thirdly, abiding love is connected to a personal relationship with God. Ruth said, your God will be my God. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, we read, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. Ruth knew God, and God loved Ruth. Therefore, Ruth could unswervingly love Naomi after her husband was gone. Fourthly, abiding love stands in death's presence. Now, you don't know what's ahead of you. Uh, and Ruth, when she married, uh, Naomi's son did not know what was ahead of her. She didn't know that she was going to be at the at the borderline of Moab, ready to follow her mother-in-law back to Israel. But she said, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord be sold to me, and more also, if anything but that death part you and me. The word the death was the only thing, identified the only thing that could separate Ruth from the only it would be well suited for the two of you to make that kind of commitment to each other. Because you don't know what's out there, but you do know what's in here. And there's abiding love. You draw it from God, and Josh, the Bible commands husbands to so love their wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. How did Christ give himself for the church? He died in our place. If it comes down to just one meal in the home, and it's just you and it's just you and Renee, it's already decided because you love her. Who's going to get that last meal? Now God forbid that that would ever happen. You've got lots of others to take care of here, right? Uh, but 
need to honor her and cherish her. And, uh, you, don't, you don't have to put her on a pedestal, but she should have a very high position in your heart. And Ruth uh, made this kind of commitment to her mother-in-law. And going back to one of the books written by the Apostle of Love, uh, the, the Apostle John, we read, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as God is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. But we love him because he first loved us. The love of Christ keeps us out of hell. Abiding love in your marriage will prevent it from becoming a hell on earth. Be loyal to each other in good times and bad. Accept one another's families, relate personally to the Lord in your marriage, and know that you are equipped even to stand in the face of death. Remember the spirit of abiding love as expressed uh, by Ruth and also in the Song of Solomon, where it was said, Solomon said to his bride, Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Its jealousy, or its ardor, is as unyielding as the grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a mighty flame, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. That's how valuable this abiding love is. We'll now exchange uh, the vows and I want to ask you a question, Josh. Will you have Renee to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep you only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Renee, will you have Josh to be your wedded husband? Will you care for him, love him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to him, so long as you both shall live? I will. All right, then you may give the flowers to the maid of honor. And the two of you may face each other, join hands. And Josh, uh, this is the complicated <laughs> part where, where I'm going to try to give you some words that you repeat. Okay. I, Josh. I, Josh. Doing pretty good so far. <laughs> take you, Renee. Take you, Renee. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have. To have. And to hold. And to hold. From this day. From this day. Forward. Forward. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poorer. For poorer. In sickness. In sickness. And in health. And in health. To love. To love and to cherish and to cherish till death parts us till death parts us according to God's according to God's holy ordinance holy ordinance and thereto and thereto I give you my pledge I give you my pledge good job Renee <laughs> will you repeat after me I Renee take you Josh I Renee take you Josh to be my wedded husband to be my wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health to love and to cherish till death parts us according to God's holy ordinance and thereto I give you my pledge Hey, not bad. We're going to get through this. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering about that death part. If you were going to get the, <laughs> you did pretty well. All right, well, we're going to uh, now sign the certificates. So I'm going to ask the two of you and your witnesses to join me right up here. So you're going to sign twice. First, this one. And 
you've signed the certificates indicating that you're entering this covenant and you have uh, had your witnesses signed as well. Now, uh, I've got another question for you, uh, Josh, and that is, what token and pledge do you offer that you will faithfully perform these covenant vows? Right. Okay. Renee, if you are willing, uh, if you are willing to accept this token of the performance of these vows, then allow it to be placed on the proper finger of the left hand. Put that on. Hold her hand, Josh. Don't let her get away. There we go. All right. And then, uh, Josh, you're to repeat after me again. With this ring, I thee wed, I thee wed, and with all my worldly goods, all my worldly goods, and my heart's faithful affection, with my heart's faithful affection, I give you my pledge, I give you my pledge, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Then, Renee, what token and pledge do you offer that you will faithfully perform these covenant vows? Tiana's got that on her little finger. And it, it is, what size ring is that? 11. Oh, 11. Yeah, that's a. I don't think yours is an 11. All right, well, Josh, if you're willing to accept the token of the performance of these vows, allow it to be placed on the proper finger of your left hand. And John, uh, Renee, while holding his hand, repeat these words with this ring. With this ring, I thee wed. I thee wed. You can help her out a little bit. <laughs> and with all my worldly goods. And all my worldly goods. And my heart's faithful affection. And my heart's faithful affection. I give you my pledge. I give you my pledge. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And now the two of you will face me and hold the uh, hands again. Marriage is a blessed union and it's commemorated in our society with the memorial ring. The ring is a wonderful and fitting memorial of the happy union as it symbolizes the, the whole marriage occasion. It is a ring of gold or some unpartishable metal and it symbolizes the nature and the untarnishable character of true love. It is fashioned into an endless circle. Having no beginning or ending, so it is a symbol of love that has no bounds. It fittingly symbolizes the duration of true love, for it never ends. Let this ring which encircles your fingers continually remind you of that endless life which we have received through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let it also let it also remind you of the abiding love that is to, to encircle your family unit. I would ask you to join me in prayer for this couple. Our Father in heaven. Thank you so much for this occasion and for the character of commitment that these two have shown. And I pray, Father, that the joy will be endless, that the circumstances that get in their way or that cause them affliction will be overcome by the strength that you have put into the two of them, by the bonds that you now bring them together. I ask, Father, that their uh, joy might be full because they seek you daily and they look to you to negotiate whatever they face in life. Just bless them richly, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, you two, would you please face each other? For as much as Josh and Renee have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have given and pledged their faithfulness 
to each other, having declared the same by giving and receiving rings and by joining hands by the authority vested in me as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, I do now pronounce you <laughs> husband and wife. You may just the right. I thought I was going to have to pull off my calendar. <laughs> All right. Now, one more time. What in whom God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time publicly, I present to you Josh and Renee Fisher. of a hand Well me I fall in love with you every single day And I just want to tell you I am So honey now Kiss me under the light of a thousand 